how much vitamin D should you be taking? Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, practicing family physician. We're gonna jump right in because we have a lot to go over. First thing I wanna do is to level set and let you know that this video, in this video, I'm specifically talking about how much vitamin D people who are deficient or insufficient in vitamin D should be taking. So this video is referring to people who don't have enough vitamin D in their system, how much vitamin D they should be taking. And by the way, there's a lot of people in this world that are vitamin D deficient, including myself. Okay. So that's not uncommon. This video is not talking about the recommended sort of daily amount that you should be taking in for vitamin D, just like routinely from the food you eat and stuff like that. It's also not talking about, I'm not focusing on, you know, if you have certain underlying medical conditions that your doctor wants to prevent or treat with vitamin D, this video is not for that either. I say this because vitamin D, the amount you should be taking, or if you need it at all, is going to depend on all of that stuff. Okay. So let me tell you how we're going to do this. And I'm going to tell you the levels that are recommended by most organizations of vitamin D that you should be taking. But first I'm going to tell you what labs equal vitamin D deficiency and insufficiency. And yes, I said lab, meaning for you to even know if you don't have vitamin D, enough vitamin D in your system, you need to check your lab value. Now, yes, there are some clinical signs and physical signs and history signs that a doctor may be able to pick up on and sort of put together and, and presume you have a vitamin D deficiency, absolutely. But often the way that we do it in the office, in addition to taking your history, is doing a lab. So understand this, it's one of the reasons why I say you should be talking to your doctor about vitamin D and if you actually need it, because not everyone does. So first of all, let's go through the vitamin D levels on a lab that would indicate that you need extra vitamin D and then let's talk about how much vitamin D you need. First thing you should know is that there actually is a lot of controversy about vitamin D um, and so just sort of, you know, different guidelines about a lot of things, including what the optimal um, value of vitamin D in our system we should have, okay? But uh, many organizations, and my source here is up to date, um, many organizations use uh, a level of 20 or greater nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D on a lab that says, okay, you have enough. Now, by the way, the lab that I use in my office uses a higher value as the level for, in, for sufficiency, okay? So keep that in mind that some labs actually may have some differences. Um, many labs, though, again, up to date, say that vitamin D insufficiency is if you have a vitamin D concentration of 12 to less than 20 nanograms per milliliter. And a vitamin D deficiency is defined as a vitamin D level of less than 12 nanograms per milliliter, okay? With that said, I said there was a lot of controversy. There was a lot of controversy with the assay methods used, the variability, et cetera, labs, et cetera. There's still, um, it's not perfect in terms of standardization, but you need to know once again, that that's how we determine how most people are, if they are vitamin D deficient. And then this brings me now to how much you should take, okay? By the way, there are two forms of vitamin D supplements on the market, vitamin D3, cholecalciferol, and vitamin D2, ergo calciferol. Um, I have a video on what the difference is between the two of those. Check that out. I will link it. Let me know if you need it, okay? Um, now, uh, and by the way, lots of people are vitamin D deficient. My vitamin D level is like less than 10. I'm on a prescription vitamin D. The amount that you need to take to treat your vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency is going to depend on a number of things. It's gonna depend on what the lab value of vitamin D you came out with, like when you got your labs done, what the number was, we went through that scale, um, your ability, your personal ability to absorb vitamin D, your how well your liver works to like convert the stuff it needs to convert, like genetics, underlying conditions, so many other things. So everybody's different, I have to say that, but, for people with um, a vitamin D level of less than 12 nanograms per milliliter, and by the way, that's the vitamin D deficient people, by the way, that is me, I'm in that category. Uh, according to up to date, the treatment is generally 25,000 to 50,000 international units of vitamin D2 or D3 orally weekly for six to eight weeks, and then 800 international units of vitamin D2 or D3 daily after, uh, thereafter, okay? Um, and yes, the 50,000 is actually what I'm taking right now. I'm taking it weekly. Although some doctors will choose a lower like weekly dose of 25,000 international units. By the way, for those of you watching, write in the comments if you're on high dose vitamin D or any vitamin D that your doctor has recommended. Um, so yes, let's keep going. So that's for people who are deficient like myself, okay? Now for people with a vitamin D level of 12 to less than 20 nanograms per milliliter, that's the person who is vitamin D insufficient. Um, we generally use 
800 to 1,000 international units daily. Uh, and usually the repeat vitamin D level needs to be done after three months of therapy, okay? Once again, the lab should be used to help us know if you're vitamin D deficient, but also to tell if your vitamin D uh, levels normalize. Now, I should also say too, this recommendation is according to UpToDate, but I have seen clinicians and sometimes I have suggested, say, a 2,000 uh, international unit daily vitamin D, depending on the person, et cetera. So remember, there's variability. Now, for people with um, vitamin D concentrations or rather levels of greater than or equal to 20 to 30 nanograms per milliliter, the recommendation is 600 to 800 units of vitamin D2 or D3 daily. Um, to uh, to maintain levels in the target range, okay? And again, if you have malabsorption, if you have other problems, that number may be different. Again, this is a range. Remember all the caveats I said, and sometimes people get frustrated with my videos because they say, oh, you say too much stuff. Well, I have to say this stuff because I want you to know really the types of nuances that go into making these decisions by us healthcare providers, which is why it's going to be best for you to make the decision about vitamin D with your healthcare provider, okay? This is not something you should decide in isolation. And remember, you can take too much vitamin D. You can take too much and you can have vitamin D levels in the toxic range. I have had patients who have done this. You can overdose on it. So don't just do this on your own. Talk to your doctor and you can use this video as a reference. Say, hey doc, I heard that da 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 but see what they say and follow their guidance, okay? Now, who is likely to have a vitamin D deficiency, you ask? Well, first of all, people who have pigmented skin like myself, brown people, okay? People who stay indoors a lot. Um, people who are older, um, people who take medications that may increase the metabolism of vitamin D uh, in and of itself, people who are hospitalized uh, certainly may be in this uh, risk uh, uh, category. Um, and there are certainly other people as well, uh, people with uh, limited sun exposure, osteoporosis, hyperparathyroidism, and others. I have another video on uh, people who are at risk. And then of course, people with malabsorption, uh, meaning they don't, they can't absorb things um, as well as maybe others, people with inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, et cetera. But what I will say is that vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency, like low levels of vitamin D, we see a lot. And it also depends, you know, where you live in the country or in the world may sort of play a role with this. Um, it's not uncommon. But just use common sense, though, when you go about this. You want to do this um, systematically and appropriately. If you think you are vitamin D deficient, you need to not just take a vitamin D supplement, you need to talk to your doctor, you need to get tested, talk about the risks and benefits of getting tested. And then if you are deficient or insufficient, you need to talk to your doctor about what they recommend you take and then have repeat labs done and things like that. Of course, this is just my opinion and I unfortunately am not your medical doctor. You Only you can talk to your doctor and find out uh, what is right for you, but hopefully this will give you some ideas. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know if you're vitamin D deficient, insufficient, if you have normal vitamin D levels, if you're taking vitamin D for certain medical conditions. Uh, again, this video is just for people who don't have enough vitamin D in their system already. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Share this video with other people write in the comments. I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician, on-air health expert and video creator. I do daily videos on Facebook. Please like and follow my page. For those of you who send stars, thank you in advance. On YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. Also, guys, go to my um, website, drjencaudill.com. You can sign up for my free health newsletter that comes out weekly. And check, follow me on all platforms. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. I have a WhatsApp channel, channel you name it, threads, at Dr. Jen Caudill. Guys, love y'all. Bye.